every fossil she found made her think of her father. So Mary stayed away from her favorite places. Until one day, after a storm, Mary was too curious to stay away any longer. She gathered her basket, hammer, and chisel and hurried down to the shore. Oh, good. Okay. I was worried because I felt like she was going to give up all these things she loved because it made her miss her dad. But good. It sounds like she's going to go back to it. Thank goodness. All right. Hey, fourth graders. Miss Lawson here. I'm so excited to read with you today. And we are starting lesson 10, holy smokes. And we are gonna go ahead and hop into our learning intention. So today we are learning again to analyze the structure of the text. And like the other story we read, it is the sequence of events. Do you remember? Oop, I'm not gonna jump ahead. Sequence of events to understand what is happening in the story. So we will know we are successful today when we can look back at the order of events in the story. We can describe what is happening in our own words in the correct order, and we can use the graphic organizer to organize our thoughts. So this is what I was going to ask you. Do you remember which graphic organizer we used to go with sequence to help us organize those thoughts? You are right, it's this one. So we're gonna go ahead and just get it started so it's all set and ready for us to go later on. The title, we're just gonna put Mary Anning up at the top as the title, a little small at the top. Then the characters so far, I'm just gonna put Mary because I, we're probably gonna learn about some more characters today but we'll just leave some room for that. Then the setting, we, I just read a little bit about what's gonna happen, but we'll leave that blank too. We'll just get it all set up for when we're ready. And then we want four different boxes for the events. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four. So guys, this doesn't have to be perfect. We're just using this to organize our thoughts and um, pause this if you need more time, but. As you can see, mine's not perfect. Just do the best that you can with it. And we're gonna go ahead and move on. But if you need more time again, just pause it. So for our foundational skill, we started in the last lesson working with ER and EST endings. So down below, let's look. It says identify base word and the base word and suffix of the words in the first row. So let's look. I'm gonna underline, maybe. Oh goodness gracious. Okay, so we're gonna underline the base word. So the underlined, this one, I'm gonna just circle it actually, is brave. So it's brave and then they added ER to say you're braver. What about this one? If you said hi, you are correct. That is the base word, good job. What about this one? Okay, it might be a little tricky. The base word is just flat with one T. Sometimes when we add these endings, we take letters off or we add extra letters. This one we had to add an extra consonant, an extra T before we added our endings. So the base is flat. What about this last one? Again, it could be a little bit of a trick. It's just gonna be noise. So I'm gonna just take it here because they took off the E, oh my gosh. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. They took off the E to add the I-E-R. So the base word is noise. Now for down here at the second row. In the second row, read the word and add the endings E-R or E-S-T to each word. So easy. So what about easy-er? Does that look right? No, we gotta take that Y away and we're gonna change it to an I. So it's actually easy -er. What about for late? Do we want it to go late and then later? No, Miss Lawson, you're being silly, right? We're just gonna add that R for later. Or if you wanna switch it up a little, go ahead and do latest. What about soft? What about for soft? We're gonna go softest, right? Nothing too crazy there, just add that ending on. And what about wet? 
Well, if you do, if you put wet and then you just add that, that looks really weird, right? So I think that's how we're gonna have to do it. But now I'm questioning myself because they both look kind of weird. So now we've done a few together. Now you're gonna have to go on your own and you, oh, I gotta clear out, clear out all my drawings. So for this one, you're gonna underline the base word in each word. Again, if you're doing this on a piece of paper, just write the base word. So pause here if you need more time if you're doing it on your paper. If it is assigned in Seesaw, these are in your Seesaw assignment already. Then for these words, you're gonna rewrite each word by adding E-R or E-S-T to each word. Make sure you switch it up. Um, you might need to take that. I'm not gonna tell you which one. You might need to take the last letter off of certain ones or change the base word to make them the correct word. So vocabulary today we have the word enormous. And if you look at that dessert, that is an enormous dessert. It is almost the size, well, it's bigger than this guy's head. So what could enormous mean? Let's see. Enormous is a very great in size or a lot of, like a big amount of things. Ooh, one of my favorite words, eagerly. So, if you're eager, like this kid in the, in the picture, the student was eagerly waving his hand in the air wanting to get called on because he knew the answer to the question. So what do you think eagerly means? You're very excitedly or and interested in whatever's going on. So hopefully you got those right. And make sure you try and use those words in a sentence. It's always great practice and they're great to put into your writing. All right, let's start this next chapter. I didn't mean chapter, let's start the next page, sorry. Until one day after a storm, Mary was too curious to stay away any longer. She gathered her basket, hammer, and chisel and hurried down to the shore. Her brother, Joseph, came along too. And when he found an enormous fossil, they forgot their troubles at least for a while. It was a skull almost as long as a horse. There was room in its mouth for hundreds of teeth. Mary stared at the eye sockets, great gaping holes, and pictured the eyes that once filled those spaces. So this is what they're describing, saying this is as big as a horse. So can you imagine the size of that animal? Crazy. Ooh, this picture looks familiar. After digging and searching and more digging and searching, Mary found the rest of the creature. Its ribs, its backbone, everything. The skeleton was too long and heavy for Mary to move by herself. She needed the help of several people to haul everything all the way home. They carried the bones, still encased in rock, into the dim, dusty workshop. Mary looked around and then she picked up her tools. It was time to get to work. Slowly, she chip-chipped the rock away. She cleaned and shined the bones. She studied them closely and saw how they fit together. When she was finished, she was certain that every bone was in the right place. She stood back and stared. She, what was this creature? Some people said it was a monster. Mary thought it was simply magnificent. So look at that, it takes up both pages. The skeleton was sold and sent to a museum in the city of London. Scientists there couldn't wait to see it and name it. It was the first complete skeleton of this creature that anyone had ever found in the world. This creature, the scientists believed, lived millions of years ago. They wanted to know more about Earth long ago, and the bones helped them do that. The men quickly forgot how the girl, about the girl who found what they were looking at. All right, so we got a stop sign. So what did Mary do to help her remember which fossils she found? 
After much talking and arguing, the scientists named the creature. They called it fish lizard or ichthyosaur. The ichthyosaur was put on display so everyone could see it. When people asked who found this creature, sometimes Mary's name was mentioned, but most of the time, no one talked about Mary. The men who studied the creature and named it were mentioned instead. They were scientists. They were experts. Mary was just a poor girl without much education who was lucky to find the creature. What did she know? Mary knew plenty of things, and as the years passed by, she learned more and more. She cut open dead fish on her kitchen table so she could see how they looked inside. It was messy work, but Mary wanted to learn all that she could about fish. Maybe she thought this knowledge would help her understand fish that lived in the past. So sometimes the stop sign doesn't mean that it's necessarily on this page. And so far, I haven't figured out the answer to this question. What did Mary do to help her remember which fossil she found? Ooh, and right here, she's cutting open that fish to look at all the bones. She made detailed drawings of the fossils she found so she would remember them. Oh, ding, 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 there's the answer. So she would find these fossils and she'd make big detailed drawings so she could remember them. She examined one fossil and compared it to another one. How were they similar? How were they different? Why? Mary wanted to know. In the evening, before she went to bed, Mary wrote to scientists in other places. She asked them questions and then waited eagerly, like that kid, waving his hand for the scientists to write back. So she was really excited to hear the answers. Mary was too poor to buy books. So whenever she could, she borrowed other people's books about science. After she had read them, sometimes several times, she wrote down the important ideas. Mary didn't know at that time, but she was doing the same work that all scientists did. She was asking questions, gathering information, and making drawings and notes of everything she studied. All right, guys, pretty good chapter. She found a really cool dinosaur, it looks like, an ichthyosaur, and now she is kind of turning into a scientist. So sequence. Readers can summarize the events in a text by telling when each event happened in a few sentences or a short paragraph. Sequence tells, sequence means to tell about the events that happened in the order they happened. So that's where this chart comes in handy. So the first thing we're going to think about is what happened first in this chapter. Let's go back. Well, Mary discovered the, the skeleton, right? So the setting is going to be, uh, let's say the, the shore, because that's where most, let's say the setting is the shore. And let's say Mary's town, even though we're going to talk a little bit about the scientists. So the very first thing is Mary discovered the skeleton and it was an animal that no one had seen before. So that's the first thing I want you to write is Mary had found that skeleton of an animal that no one had seen before. Then if we're looking, they talked about it a little bit. After digging and searching, she found the rest of it. The skeleton was too long. They carried it home. Mary looked around. It was time to go to work. So this is the next step. I think she chipped away at the rock. She cleaned and shined the bones. So Mary cleaned and shined the bones. and saw how they fit together. Perfect. 
That's the next step. So she cleaned them and fit them all together. Then, well, she thought about it, nothing too crazy yet. She's just thinking about it. Ooh, the next step was the skeleton was sold and sent to a museum. So next, skeleton was sold to a museum in London. So it was sold to a museum in London, and we could even say while it was there, they named it and named it an ichthyosaur. That is a weird word. And my, me oh my gosh, my messy handwriting. Don't be better than Miss Lawson. Don't be that messy. So this one says the skeleton was sent to a museum in London and named an ichthyosaur. Then what do you think this last one might be about? So what did the rest of the chapter talk or what the rest of this section talk about with Mary where she's doing drawings? It looks like she's reading. She's putting together the fish. Hopefully you realize that she started studying fossils, asking scientists questions. So I'm gonna say Mary studied fossils. Don't mess up on your writing here like I am. Asked scientist questions. And <clears throat> took lots of notes, right? Took lots of notes. And they said all of these things are what other scientists were doing. So she's kind of becoming a scientist. So just like that, we've summarized the entire section that we just read, just like they said. We can summarize the events by putting it in order of what happened. So if I wanted to do a summary, I would just say, Mary discovered the skeleton um, of an animal that no one had seen before. Then Mary cleaned and shined that's the bones and saw how they fit together. They sent that skeleton to the museum in London where they named it an ichthyosaur. Mary continued to study fossils, ask scientists questions, and took lots of notes. Bam, look at that guys. Rock stars, great job. If you need more time, go ahead and pause the video here. Um, but you did awesome. Next, how does Mary go from a girl looking for fossils to becoming a scientist? So hopefully that sequence of events kind of showed you that, right? At the very beginning of the story, what was Mary like? Why did she want the fossils at the beginning? Well, if we looked back, the main reason she wanted those fossils was to sell them to make money for her family. Even though she was really interested in them, remember when she was going to sleep at night, she was thinking about all those creatures and how they used to live and what they were like. Um, but after she found that huge skeleton, um, her interests just keep getting more high. Oh my gosh, that didn't make any sense. She kept getting more interested in um, the fossils and she studied them, she read books, she took notes, and so, and just like that, she became a scientist without even realizing it. Pretty cool. Now it's your turn, fourth graders, for your reading response today. What happened after Mary put the bones of the skeleton together? Go ahead and get that in done in seesaw today or on a piece of paper and pencil and get that turned into your teacher. Have a great rest of your day and thank you so much for joining me today. Bye fourth graders.